boy have I got a treat for you today, because not only is this an extremely good match, but I've got myself one of the most fun teams I've come up with in Gen 9, and it's actually super strong. Listen, if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Less than half of the people who do watch these are subscribed, it only takes you a sec, and I'm well on my way to 300k this year. But I tell you one thing I know for sure, you're not going to expect how this match ends up, so let's jump into it here. So they're going to end up leading off with one stick boy. As I decide to go with Jolteon, I know that's a good option for me to pivot. I can get a nice little volt switch. And with that choice specs, Jolteon hurts everything on this team. So it turns out he's actually going to switch into the Gudra here. Its name is Porridge. We already know this thing is thick as hell with them thighs. Call me Papa Bear because I'm trying to get myself a bowl. I don't know how the story goes, but I'm going to regardless go for the volt switch. It does nothing to this thing, which leads me to believe I think this is probably a salt vest. Alright, Gudra's also just specially defensive his tits, you really cannot touch this thing on the special side. And while I've got a bunch of different options to switch into this thing to hit it physically, I figure I'm gonna go right into the, uh, the Pin Kirchen. Able to spill my lemonade all over the battlefield, and Electric Surge is gonna be pretty nice for a strategy later. I wanted to ensure that I'm able to get that up, this thing is carrying the tra uh, Terrain Extender. Um, but so, yeah, basically this guy's just a little spiky dude, he comes in here, he lays down some spikes, and kinda just goes away. So. Uh, my plan is to go for the Toxic Spikes. I know he doesn't have anything on his squad uh, that can soak up Toxic Spikes and only one Defogger, which is going to be the Braviary. So I get one layer of Toxic Spikes up as he actually goes for an Acid Spray, which, you know, drops your special defense harshly. And that's actually an interesting move from the Gudra. Now Pinkurchin is looking like a wet paper bag on the battlefield. He's basically going to die to a Stab Dragon move. However, I don't really have much that wants to switch into this thing. Honestly, I just did not expect the Acid Spray, but goes for the Dragon Pulse there as I don't really have anything to switch into. And unfortunately, little homie Stickler does go down. So, um, I, I did do what I needed to do. I got up a layer of the Spikes, which is going to break any potential Focus Ashes, and also um, got up that Electric Terrain. So now, I think it's time to bring in the absolute beast that is Squawkabilly. I swear to God. People are sleeping on Squawkabilly. This thing is such a beast and it's really fun to use. So here's what this thing does. I go for a Protect as I expect this thing to stay in. I uh, go for some type of coverage move here as it does stay and goes for the Ice Beam and that is perfect because now uh, that turn was able to buy me time to basically just burn myself and that is because this dude's got two things going for him. One is a cool ass haircut. Two is his ability called Guts uh, which now is going to boost my facade to levels that are basically off the damn charts. So, um, I realized that this thing actually only dies if I go for the Terra Normal and get the extra stab boost and then go for the facade, but he actually ends up switching out into the Houndoom here, uh, who is going to step on a nice little poisoned Lego, which is great, um, and then I just basically go full diamond on his ass, and there's no way in the world a Houndoom lives. A guts boosted, a Terra boosted facade from the Squawkabilly. And also, I just go full drip on him, get that diamond on my head. Um, and this is an interesting mod for this matchup because I know that I'm able to outspeed a lot on his team. And if I can get some chip on stuff, Facade easily KOs them. So, Houndoom does actually end up having the Focus Sash here, but that is exactly the reason why we set up the Toxic Spikes earlier. Um, because, you know, he's just down to 1 HP, and unfortunately, Doggo goes down to the Poison. So, that is really good for me. Houndoom is actually one of the scarier Pokemon against my team, so seeing it go down is super nice. Uh, now I take a little bit of burn chip, but that's fine. Elvis does not plan on taking any other damage other than from, from his flame orb today, so we're good with it. Anyway, uh, now he gets a free switch into whatever he wants. They decide to go into the Braviary. Uh, now this is an interesting matchup. I could stay in, go for the facade, and see if this is a defensive one. If it is defense invested, it has a chance. I figure I have a bunch of different answers here, so I'm just going to go ahead and tuck the old parrot in the back pocket, go for the U-turn here. And I've got some tricks up my sleeve for this fella, so I figure I should probably use the electric terrain that I set up, and now it is time to bring in the Drift Blim. So the strategy behind this is to try to catch people off guard, and that Drift Blim is going to do some stuff that doesn't ordinarily do. So I come in, upon touching the ground somehow as a balloon, uh, I'm able to activate my electric seed, which boosts my defense, and also in the process is going to activate my unburden ability. So now I've doubled my speed, got a defense boost, and it's time to start going. He actually does end up going for the defog there. So that not only gets rid of the toxic spike, but it also gets rid of the electric train. So luckily I was able to use that seed while it was available. Um, and I'm just going right, to go right for the acrobatics here. As he's going to switch into the Gudra. Now Gudra is usually a Pokemon that switches in well. Expecting me to be a special attacker. But unfortunately for my dude, I actually am acrobatics. Now acrobatics pairs really nicely with this set. Because if you don't have an item, it is going to double in power plus stab, two of them is going to be able to take care of thick ass porridge, 
And uh, that's exactly what this Drift Blim is built to do. With that defense boost, it makes it so I'm bulky enough to be able to take attacks and outspeed everything with that Unburden boost. So here is an interesting matchup where the Glaceon's gonna come in with his little boots on, and I'm thinking I probably shouldn't go for the Acrobatics, it doesn't kill here, but what I can do is instead go for a Destiny Bond, because an Ice Beam does well over 100% to me, and I can basically just knock out this Glaceon and just trade it. So, that is what I decide to do. I'm gonna take my attacker down with me. He actually ends up going for the Freeze Dry, and it <laughs> knocks me down to 10 HP, and turns my ass into a Popsicle. So, that is literally the worst case scenario. I've never been so down atrocious. It, that is, I think, like a 10% chance for that to not even kill me. Wait, no, I looked it up. That's actually a 62.5% chance for that freeze dry to just kill me. So I got really unlucky there. Ordinarily, uh, you would want to see your Pokemon live, but that really does not work out. Uh, as now they're actually going to end up switching, and I stay frozen with my little Cool Whip on my head and basically just a sit and duck over here. But Spide Ops comes in, probably wants to get up some hazards. I'm imagining something like a Sticky Web. I'm just gonna stay and go for an Acrobatics and actually thaw out, which is the greatest thing ever, because now Acrobatics takes care of the Spide Ops, uh, and Drift Blim is now back to being a hero. No longer Popsicle, and that is amazing. So Spide Ops goes down, now they go back into the Glaceon, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thawed out, I'm obviously still faster, there's no reason for me not to go for the Destiny Bond once again here, and then I can just kill the Glaceon, however, it actually has the Ice Shard, which is wildly unfortunate because I do not go first because that's priority, um, but Drift Glim was at least able to take care of a couple mons, um, and I, I, I did do what I was supposed to, so it's fine. Now, I'm gonna go into the Alolan Jinx. I got my lips ready for a nice little smooch, or to take a bite out of this Glaceon. Uh, I'm actually gonna be choice banned on this set, and I figure a Psychic Fangs should be able to take care of this thing, right? Wrong. It leaves it with red and goes for the freeze dry and takes care of me. I thought for sure uh, <laughs> choice banded Psychic Fangs there with the strong job boost was gonna be able to take care of that fella. Um, but that is actually really bad because I was relying on that thing to be able to grab a, a little bit of late game sweep. Unfortunately, plans have changed. And so now we gotta go a little evolution battle here. I got the pointier one and I'm faster and just all around a way cooler dude. You cannot convince me otherwise. Kachow. So he's actually gonna stay in here, go for the ice shard just to get a little bit of chip as I go for the volt switch. Uh, I figure it doesn't really matter what I end up killing this thing with, but what the Volt Switch does is ensures that Jolteon stays in the back pocket for the the fish of their own. They actually have a Bruxish too, which is kind of crazy. But now this allows me a free switch into Elvis, and Squawkabilly basically can come in here and just finish off the match. I figure I'd just give it to the dude because Squawkabilly has already been putting in work, and this mon is very fun to use, and I just want to see if we can make it happen. So, he's down to two Pokemon. He has the Braviary, and he has his Bruxish. Now, both of these things just died to the facade, but let's see how this goes. I do go for it here against the Braviary, and the power of Squawkabilly is way too much. You're looking at these two birds thinking I'm the weaker one? No, no, no. You're in incorrect, as that is going to take care of it. So now, the last Pokemon is going to be the Bruxish. I am faster. A facade does like 900% to that thing, and uh, I'm ready to have myself a nice little late game feast here. So in comes the Ugly Fish the hell are the odds there's two of these fish in one battle? I don't know. But I go for the facade, and he's gonna go for the Terra. I figure he's just doing it because he hasn't terra yet, and the only way this can go south for me is if it's Ghost. And it turns out, he straight up is running Ghost Terra Bruxish, and that is the scariest Ghost Terra I have ever seen, I swear to god. There's almost no reason to run Terra Ghost other than a situation like this, but it works out extremely well, and Psychic Fangs is able to take care of me. So Squawkabilly is cut a little bit short, but my dude got hoed. I did not know what this fish was cooking. <laughs> and so now, I'm down to Go-Goat and my Jolteon. I figure it's we might as well give Inspector Gadget a nice little, little try here. I can at least um, hopefully take an attack and then try to get some chip to ensure that Jolteon outspeeds and kills with a Shadow Ball. But mostly, I did not expect to be put in this situation. This is why we love the new Terra mechanic. It can really turn games around and it makes things very interesting. So, this thing goes for the Psychic Fangs. Unfortunately, yeah, way too powerful. Gogot is gonna die. So now it comes down to Choice Specs Jolteon with the Shadow Ball. I do have the super effective move. And I'm thinking, at least I'm put in a situation here where I, Bruxish is not specially defensive. So I feel like there's no way that this thing is gonna live this. Unless it's Focus Sash and he's running two Sashes. But I go for the Shadow Ball. And thank God Jolteon truly is the goat because that is gonna be enough to take care of the Ghost Fish. And Crisis averted for real. That was a really close game. 
uh, the ending there was definitely something I did not expect. And it never goes how you think it's gonna. But regardless, thank you guys very much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this one and a lot of fun with this team. So expect to see a bit more of it. And don't forget to leave a like and a comment. I do appreciate seeing all you guys' support. And it's really fun for me. So I'll see you next time. Peace out.